Well, good afternoon. We uh, thank you for tuning in for our Devoted to Him Bible study this Thursday evening. We're glad you can join us. Uh, been an awesome day. Uh, kind of sit down on the couch and fell asleep. So I'm just kind of waking up from that nap. But it's it's good to be with you and thank God for you. Uh, hey, my brother. It's an awesome day in the Lord. It's hot weather. So I pray that everyone stays safe and stay hydrated. Drink plenty of water. I tell you. Uh, but it is that Bible study hour. So we're going to just talk with you uh about some things today that I think is very important for the kingdom of God. But let's pray and let's just get started and see what God has for us today. Father, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for just all that you bring to our lives, God. How awesome you are in our lives, how much peace and protection and confidence. But most of all, God, salvation through your son, Jesus. God, we can't thank you enough for loving us and and caring for us and protecting us and keeping us. Now, God, give us wisdom, insight, and knowledge as we rightly divide the word of God. God, as we endeavor in your word today, God, for us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, what we want to talk about today, I feel is very, very important because the Bible speaks of our mind. Let, the, let this mind in you be... The same as the mind of Jesus Christ. So I want to talk about kingdom, kingdom mentality, kingdom mentality. Um, see, because it's so important that we begin to think, act, and operate from a kingdom mentality standpoint. And kingdom mentality is a framework that allows us to see things from God's point of view and not our own. Kingdom, kingdom mentality guides our emotions and our actions and our reactions and that we see things from God's point of view and it, it helps structures our strength. And it, hey, my son, Ashad, thank you for uh, tuning in. But we're talking about kingdom mentality. If we was to, uh, our focus scripture would be Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. I'm just going to give you one verse. But we're going to build on several different things as we talk about kingdom mentality. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 is a very familiar passage of scripture. It simply says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things, all these things shall be added to you. And, it's, and leading up to that verse, it says, don't worry about uh, what you eat, what you should wear or what you should drink. Uh, we just acknowledge God. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. I'm going to go ahead and read verse 34. So it said, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about his own things. Sufficient for the day is his own trouble. So, but our focus is that Matthew 6 and 33, about seeking ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto us. So that's our base scripture. See, and when we begin to have kingdom mentality, it's an unshakable, it's an unshakable commitment to, the, to our sovereign cause or to the sovereign cause of Christ. It's an unshakable commitment. Unshakable means that we're not tossed by every wind and doctrine that comes along. We know the truth and we walk in the truth. Regardless of what goes on in our life, we have that unshakable commitment to the sovereign cause of Christ that motivates us. It motivates us in every aspect of our life. It motivates us to present ourselves as a living sacrifice and Seeking and as a living sacrifice, as we seek first the kingdom of God, and that uh, that present ourselves is in Romans twelve and one, where it says, "I beseech you, brother, in the view of God's mercy, present yourself as a living sacrifice, pure and holy, uh, unto God." And then our base scripture of, "But seek ye first the kingdom of God." 
And we got to have that unshakable commitment. See, as we navigate, as we navigate through the good and bad, the success and failures, and the pains and the triumphs of our lives, we need to develop the eyes and the heart to see and think and respond to things from God's perspective. So we need to develop the, uh, you know, life is tough sometimes. But uh, there's a song that says, uh, all of my good days outweigh my bad days, so I won't complain. Life gets tough, but we've had some good days, we've had some bad days, we've had some successes, we've had some failures, we've had some pains, and we've had some victories. Uh, but we need to develop the eyes and the heart to see and think and respond to regardless of what, which one we're in, which season we're in, we respond from God's perspective, okay? And Jesus lays out, he lays out this viewpoint in Luke chapter 19. Uh, as he points himself toward Jerusalem, the, the place where, you know, when he was headed to Jerusalem, this is the place where he was destined to accomplish his mission through the com complete humiliation on the cross. So Jesus was always keen on focus, regardless of what he was facing. He was Luke chapter 19, it says, For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. The Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. And that's Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Uh, Jesus stayed focused. And, and before he spoke to these words, Jesus encountered Zacchaeus. Uh, Zacchaeus is a tax collector and, uh, and rejected. And he was also rejected in the Jewish culture. But yet Jesus went to his house with uh, all the other rebels. He said, I came to seek and save the lost. Zacchaeus uh, uh, believed in Jesus as a Savior and Lord and Christ. And he declared again his overall purpose for coming to earth uh, uh, by dining with Zacchaeus. He, do, he, he went to someone that was lost. So he defined his purpose again uh, by, uh, of coming to earth by dining with Zacchaeus and inviting him to follow him. Jesus corrected the disciples, thinking about what he was up to when he said he would, that he had to remind them that he came to seek and save the lost. So, so often when we're on this journey, people would try to, just like they did with Jesus, they try to uh, outthink or outmaneuver or cast doubt on what your motives are. That season you got to really be tuned in on kingdom mentality so you won't you'll stay focused so you won't lose lose focus or people will deter you out of your purpose you know and that word purpose is a word that we use a lot in life in the christian realm i want to know my purpose i i want to i, I want to fulfill my purpose i'm a firm believer that we have one biblical purpose one biblical purpose, and that one biblical purpose is to glorify God. That's our purpose, to glorify God. That everything we, everything else we do is ministry to fuel that purpose. Whether it's singing, whether it's playing, whether it's preaching, whether it's exaltation, whatever we do, our main purpose in life is to always glorify God. And everything we do is as ministry fuels that purpose, that we fulfill in that purpose of glorifying God through that ministry or through that gift or that talent or that anointing that God has given us. But we lose sight of that main purpose of glorifying God. Then our ministries uh, takes on a different connotation. Uh, it becomes more about us and less about God. So we got to make sure that whatever we're doing, uh, we're, we're doing it for God's glory and not for our own. And that's where Jesus was talking to his disciples, even as they were trying to figure out what he was up to. He was that I, I know my purpose. My purpose is came to seek and save the lost. But also my purpose is fueling uh, of glorifying my Father, which is in heaven. So Jesus told the parable about how to live 
until he returns. And he, he told us in Luke chapter 19, verses 11 through 27. Now, I'm not going to read all those verses. Luke chapter 19, verse 11 through 27. And, and it talks, this is kingdom. He was instilling kingdom mentality in, in, in his disciples and to us and in, until he returns. And it can be summarized in five points. The kingdom mentality can be summarized in five points. And it's found in Luke chapter 19, verse 11 through 27. Here they are. We ought to do gospel business until Christ return. We ought to do gospel business until Christ return. What is gospel business? It's testifying, it, it giving a testimony that, that Jesus is our Lord and Savior, that we only have one name given unto man by which we can be saved. We're washed in the blood of Jesus. So we ought to be doing gospel business, spreading the good news until Jesus comes. We're all servants. I need to say that again. We're all servants to carry out the task of seeking and save the lost. Now we may have different titles. We may have different titles in this earth realm or in the Christian Christian parameter of ministry, but we only we all have one purpose and we're all servants of God. And we're called out, we're called to carry out the task of seeking and save the lost. If we're not preaching to seek and save the lost, if we're not testifying or giving a testimony to seek and save the lost, if we're not spreading the gospel, that's our main purpose. And we are servants. We must never forget that Jesus said, I came to serve, not to be served. We got to have that kingdom mentality. We're all servants. And as a servant, we're called into account. Oh, what do I mean? As a servant, we're called into account. We will give an account of the deeds that's done in this body, whether good or bad. And it's only those things that we've done for God that's going to gonna stand. So we're going to give an account. Um, and then this one, we got to realize that Jesus is the king. It's not me. It's not you. It's not the bishop. It's not the apostle. It's not the prophet. It's not the prophet that Jesus is the king. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus is the king. And get this. Jesus owns the resources for the task. That means if we keep kingdom, kingdom mentality, make sure our purpose stay focused on glorifying God, all the resources that we need, we need for this journey, we need to, to accomplish what uh, we set out to do, Jesus have the resources for it. See, Jesus tells us the story to correct our wrong thinking about himself and his mission. See, sometimes we get it wrong. It's not about proper popularity. It's not about making a name for myself. It's not about how many pats on my back I get. It's not about how esteem, how how esteem people hold me. It's about I'm holding Christ to the highest esteem. Uh, he is above anything, okay? And we got to get our thinking right. We're talking about kingdom mentality. We must get our thinking right. Now, I'm not telling you that we don't honor the men and women of God who preach and teach the word of God. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not uh, That's not what I'm saying at all. But I'm saying even with them, they have to make sure that they stay focused, that Jesus is the king, the Lord of our lives, and that he is above anything, okay? We, we, ought, we ought to hold them in great esteem, but we never lose sight of Jesus. You know, I, I, I get this uh, when people say, well, my pastor said, my pastor said, and that's good. That's good. I'm glad you're listening to your pastor. But sometimes you ought to, what ought to come out your mouth is the Bible says, the word of God says, this is the word of God. You know, not just what your pastor say, but you ought to have some word in you that you can say, this is what the word of God says. And, and my pastor reiterated what the word of God says. My pastor is preaching the word of God. You know, when I was uh, pastoring, and I, I probably told you this story before, but when I was pastoring, what used to hurt me the most is on Sunday morning after I preached, and I thought I did pretty good, 
when peace, people come up to me and say, Pastor, you really preached good today. You really showed out today. And that hurt my heart. Because if they only saw me, then I failed them that day. But And I have to teach them that when if, if they really receive the word of God, instead of saying, Pastor, you did, tell me, Pastor, God really used you today. Pastor, God really spoke through you today. And, and I had to teach them that. I had to teach them the difference in glorifying me and not taking the spotlight off of God. Because it's all about God. And if they didn't see God through my teaching and my preaching, I really failed them. If they only saw me. So that was just a teaching moment in the body of Christ now. Uh, and, and I had to teach them that, that it's all about him. It's not about me. Okay, the disciples thought Jesus would usher in his kingdom by kicking out the Romans. We always think that when you talk about seeking first the kingdom of God. I'm sure they concluded that they would serve in a, all, in a powerful position with Jesus as king. See, sometimes people have ulterior motives when they want you to lift you up to an elevated place. Yes, we are supposed to bring our brothers and sisters along with us. But uh, some people only grab hold to your coattail so they can get a good position, a good seat. So, but instead, Jesus tells them he is leaving earth and calling them to continue in service to his mission until he returns. So Jesus had to get his disciples straight that he was not establishing a kingdom here on earth for himself uh, to rule but he was leaving earth, going back to the heavens to be with the Father. And this is more than over, way over 2,000 years ago, Christ died on the cross. And those who have trusted in his glorious work cannot continue with business as usual. If you've been born again, if you said Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you cannot continue as business as usual, the way you usually conduct business. See, Jesus left glory and came to the world to seek and save the lost. And he calls every one of us, every one of his followers, he calls every one of his followers to participate in this task. So if you saved, if you're born again, if you've been, if you're on your way to heaven, then Jesus called you to the task of seeking and saving the lost. Not just those that are in the church and on your pew, but he called you to witness to those that don't look like you, those that may hate you, to seek and save the lost. Okay, the first point of this parable, we can sum up in this statement. We got to do Jesus' business until he come back. We got to be about our father's business. We must be about our father's business until he come back. Today, today our Lord conducts his business of seeking and saving the lost through us. That's how he furthered the kingdom of God. He still on the throne, but he's speaking through us. We are his ambassadors in the earth realm, according to scripture. Yeah, I think it's somewhere in the book of Philippians, but we are ambassadors of God. Okay? We are ambassadors of God. We're called to do his work. He said, and Jesus even said, greater works we should do than him. But we are him as ambassadors. As though God is speaking through us, compelling men and women to be re reconciled unto God. So if we have been reconciled with God ourselves, we have the ministry of reconciliation that we should be doing in the earth realm now. Compelling men and women to be reconciled with God as their Lord and Savior. Reconcile means to bring back, okay? We got to be about our Father's business and God is using us, uh, He's using our God-given personalities, our intellect, our gifts to redeem as many as we can for eternity. So God, okay, that's in 2 Corinthians about the ambassadors, okay? I saw I misquoted that, 2 Corinthians. But we, but he's using all those things that he gives us, our personalities. He wants to have that upbeat personalities and, 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 and positive personalities intellect. He wants to use knowledge uh, that, that he's given us. 
and he wants gifts to re and, and gifts that he placed in us that we use for uh, compelling men and women to be saved. Okay, I want to go to a scripture real quick. Let me find it real quick. I love this. I love the scripture because it sums it up. Uh, let me let me find it. Okay. Okay. I'm going to get there. Just hang with me. Here it is. 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. It says, Grace is starting to read at verse 2. Well, I'm going to start reading the uh, part of verse 1. To those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. It says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God, of our Jesus, of, of Jesus our Lord. As in his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these we may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, give all diligence. See, he's given us everything we need to participate in the divine nature because we have escaped the corruption of the world. So if he's given it to us, then he expects us to use it that others may be saved. Okay? So we are his mouthpiece in the earth realm. And as we journey with God in this life, and notice I said we journey with God in this life. I know that this is a question that many believers grapple with in church circles so about kingdom mentality. So so we so often use kingdom the term kingdom minded, but do we really understand what it means to be kingdom minded? It's not just about getting getting to heaven. It, it is it, it I want to break it down and we talk about what kingdom mentality is all about. If we go back to our base scripture in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. It says, but seek first, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek, that word seek. I want to talk about it first. Seek. I believe it's much bigger than the small-minded self, yet it is a great adventure to, to discover the truth. So uh, we must get into the Word of God. We have to seek God. He says, seek and you shall find. So we have to get into the Word of God uh, to expand our mind, expand our thinking, expand those things that, uh, uh, that God wants us to do, and quit living in that little small box and we can begin to step out into those things and know that this word is true, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. So seek is get, getting out of that small-minded mindset, small-minded mindset. And we got to begin to expand. We got to seek. Christ himself said that we should first seek the kingdom of God. And that's in our base scripture. Matthew chapter 6, 6 and 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto you. So we must become kingdom-minded in the right perspective. Christ didn't say seek salvation or healing or freedom, nor riches or, or anointing or calling. <laughs> he didn't say we seek all those things. Now, all these things are important, yet he commands us to seek something different, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And when we seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he said all these other things shall be added unto us. Okay, when we seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, salvation will come, healing will come, oh, freedom will come. Riches will come, but we'll begin to use those riches. As we'll begin to look at riches in the right perspective. Okay? Anointings will come. Callings will come. 
See, but sometimes we think we just because we got saved, we stop seeking. But he commands us that we should seek the kingdom of God. And once we attain it, all the other things will fall into place. How are we? Seek the kingdom of God and all those other things shall fall in place. And, 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 and if we simply continue to seek. So many people have gotten saved and stopped seeking. Because, you know, we got to continue to grow, continue to let God expand our mind. We got to continue to expand our knowledge in the things of God. Uh, so that's why he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. His righteousness. See, when we have his righteousness, then we will, we will, we will represent salvation or a saved person from the right perspective. You get what I'm saying? We'll represent our freedom from a right perspective when we have the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God. So I think we got it backwards. We, we want to be saved, yes, but we're not, we're not seeking the kingdom of God. You know, even when the model prayer, let thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven, how? We got to have that kingdom mindset, that kingdom mentality to recognize that, that God's, how God operates in the earth realm through us. Okay? You can only seek something if you know it's lost. And when sin came into the world, when sin came into the world, that's when kingdom mentality went out the door. Remember, Adam used to walk with God in the cool of the day, but as soon as they oh, disobeyed God, uh, and ate of the tree. They hid from God. And, and, and God wasn't looking for Adam like he didn't know where Adam was. But well, Adam, where art thou? And Adam said, we hid from thee because we didn't want you to know that we were naked. He said, well, who told you? See, that we got to understand as we grow, as we grow in this life, as we grow uh, in the, as we grow in our salvation, we got to understand, come to realize, kingdom mentality and God's righteousness is those things that are missing. We got to seek those things that are lost. When you realize it's lost, you can only look for it for its value. You know it adds value to your life. The size of the value would determine the passion of which you seek the lost object. So when you know that there is more to your life than just saying I was baptized and I'm saved. There's more work for God for, for, that God wants me to do. I want to fulfill that purpose of glorifying God through different ministries, through different avenues. Then we'll seek with a passion because we know it brings value to our life. It brings value to that relationship that we have with God. Okay? So we got to be, we got to be honest with ourselves. When we gl glance at the general condition of Christians, we do not find many people seeking this specific object of the kingdom of God. We find more people seeking comfortability, uh, uh, seeking getting over one. Uh, when they're going through something, they're just really seeking God to get through that one thing. God said, I don't want to just get you through that one thing. I want to give you strength and courage and the tenacity that when something else come up, you still have the courage and the fortitude to stand in the midst of whatever adversity you're facing and know that God will deliver. You got to have that. But if not, spirit, like when the Hebrew boys was getting ready to face the fiery furnace, O king, we will not bow to you. See, God is able to deliver us. But if not, see, we that's where we got to get in. We got to begin to get that kingdom mentality that we, that regardless of what we're going through. And we don't see that in the Christian body of Christ today. We do not find many people really seeking kingdom mentality. Christians are busy seeking many other things, which include happiness and that, that, that word purpose again, riches and power and acceptance, public standing and so on. Yeah. I want people to like me, but I want God to love me, which he's going to always love me. I want to be more in the right standing with God. If I'm in the right standing with God, 
He will place me in right standing with man. But again, I, I know I use that word purpose again. One main purpose, that's to glorify God. But when we, when we seek God and quit seeking all these other things of popularity and, 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 and opportunities, listen, if you seek the kingdom of God, your gifts and your anointing will make room for you. Your gift and your anointing, and will, God will open up doors. When we say God can open doors and no man can shut, shut doors and no man can open. See, we're too busy trying to open doors for ourselves. Okay? We, we, but we got to seek. Seek the kingdom of God. And, 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 and let's go a little bit further. Because in that, uh, Matthew 6 and 33, it says seek first. See that? We got to break it down. Seek first. So we got to seek the kingdom of God. When do we seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness? First. First. He, Jesus goes on to say, seek it first. Now, if the Lord of all creation tells you to do something first, I think it should become a, a, a priority in your life. First things must be first. It, it's an English saying, which is true. In, air, in this very matter. How many Christians are seeking the kingdom first? How many different. How many Christians are seeking the kingdom first? How many Christians are, 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 are seeking to be kingdom minded? Have that kingdom mentality. So to go further. Let's, let's return to the question of. What is the kingdom of God and his righteousness? What is the kingdom? of? Maybe if we understand this and realize we have lost it, it becomes a, a more of a priority in our life again. So what is the kingdom of God? So this is, this is my discovery thus far. And it, it, as I grow and I, as, as I learn more, it may change, it may broaden, it may, be, it, it may broaden. But the kingdom of God is not the church. Woo! The kingdom of God is not the church. And when I say church, I'm talking about the building. The one thing that I've discovered is that the kingdom is not the church, at least the way we see the church. The way we see the church as a building. And as I test this understanding, I realize that most people understand the term church as the building a place of worship. They see it as a place to gather, usually on a Sunday. And we give our tithes and our offering and so on and so on. And once these are important activities to understand, but yet it's not the kingdom of God. Okay? We, we see it as a, the, 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 as those things are important. Don't get me wrong. We should forsake not the assembly of ourselves together as many have. We should give our tithes and offering. We should go to be baptized. We should go to hear a sermon. We should uh, 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 go to grow spiritually. Uh, the, those things are important, but the church as a building is not the kingdom of God. Okay? I, I, I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to give you scripture. The word translated church becomes comes from the Latin German background of Cherokee. That's K-E-R-K-E, -E, Cherokee, which means a temple or shrine, a circular enclosure. This is much of our understanding of the word church is correct. But it does not relate to the Greek word Jesus used in Matthew 16 and 18. Christ used the word ecclesia. Ecclesia. It's ecclesia. Uh, in the Greek, it means a gathering of citizens from their homes to a public place, an assembly of people for the purpose of deliberating, called out ones, the sense of governance, uh, assembly of Israelite. So attending church does not mean that we are kingdom minded. I, I, I need you to get that because some people come to church with Malice and hatred in their heart and leave with malice and hatred in their heart. Okay? We are the, we are the church. We are the ecclesia. We are the called out. So 
when we fail to realize that when we gather together on Sunday morning, we should be fellow believers on one accord, on one accord, going to lift up the name of God. Now, we may all have different things on our mind and on our hearts, but we know that God will meet us. God will meet us. Uh, uh, Sometimes we we judge uh, services by the emotional outburst that takes place in the building. Then when people leave, they're still the same. Look, I'm a firm believer that conviction must take place. It's okay to shout. Don't get me wrong. It's okay to shout. Uh, but when the shout is over, when the shout is over, are you a, are you a better person? Are you loving better? Are your life changed when the shout is over? You know, uh, you may pass out, but when you wake up, are you a better person? Are you more focused on God and what he's doing in your life? Uh, so don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to downplay what happens, but I'm saying the effects of what happens should be a change, a transformation in our lives that we don't leave the same way we came. We don't just leave and say, boy, we had church, but then you go back to your same way of living, your same way of thinking, your same way of treating people, your same way, uh, uh, your same view of the church. Cause I mean, you know, there's some people that shout in the church and then talk bad about the church when they leave. And I'm talking about the building. I'm talking about the assembly as a whole. They, they shout on the word and then still talk bad about the church when they leave. But there ought to be a transformation. Kingdom minded people. He said, uh, if two or three are gathered in my name, touching and agreeing on the same thing, then I'll be in the midst. What's that thing we should be touching and agreeing on? That Jesus is Lord. He's our Lord and Savior. That through him, all things are possible. And we want to cultivate that relationship with him. We want to exalt him. We want to lift him up. We want to glorify him. <coughs> Excuse me. That's when he's in the midst. So we can't judge whether Jesus was in the midst by the outpour, outpour of, uh, uh, of shouting in the church. It's more about the transformation that takes place in the church or through the church service. That's when we know that God was really in our midst, when he places something on our mind and our heart that should be corrected in our life. That's what we're talking about, seeking the kingdom of God. Kingdom mentality is about growing. And every time you grow, there's transformation, there's correction that takes place in your life. Your thinking is broadened. Your, your service is more uh, fortified. Your commitment is greater. Uh, your language have changed. Come on and talk to me. That's what we're talking about. Uh, see, there's a he Hebrew word, and I may not pronounce this right. It's mal malayaka. Malayaka. It means kingdom or nation rather than just a synagogue or place of gathering. I'm going to spell that for you. M-A-M-L-A-K-A-H. It means kingdom or nation rather than a synagogue or place of gathering. When we come together on Sunday, we are a nation. We are a kingdom. We are, we are the ecclesia. We are the called out. We are God's representative in the earth realm. And we happen to gather in a building, but we gather in that building that we can be edified, that God will be glorified in our life. You, you get what I'm saying? That we can be edified, that God can be glorified. We come on Sunday morning to get instructions. We not only get instructions, but we get inspiration. And that's the reason we shout, because God has already been speaking to us all week long. And on Sunday morning, we get confirmation through the preach word that, that, that encourages us uh, that we're on the right path. And that the, the, the changes that need to take place in our life, we, we see that and we hear that. And, and that's when we, we begin to grow. So uh, Sunday church on Sunday morning is a place of transformation, a place of healing where we've been hurt. 
You know, people holler about church hurt you, but how are you going to heal if you don't come back to church? Are you getting what I'm saying? How are you going to heal? The church is a place for those that are sick. And, and until we get a kingdom minded, but in it, it, look, let me just, let me slow down a little bit. If you go to the hospital, hospital is for sick people, right? But there's some doctors in the hospital, right? There's some nurses in the hospital. There's some pharmacists in the hospital to help the sick get well. Okay. So when we come to church on Sunday morning, there ought to be some people already in the church that's healed. So though that those that come in that are hurt, battered, and bruised, that we're not in our feelings, but we're kingdom-minded. We come on Sunday morning on an assignment to lift up those that come through the door that's hurt, that need healing, that need salvation. And we come with that purpose in mind to encourage them through our testimony, through our praise, through our worship, and our commitment. Come on and talk to me. I don't want to go to a church where everybody's broken. Somebody in there got to know something about God to help lift me up. Now, it may not meet me every Sunday. It may be some, every each Sunday God may use a different individual. But we got to understand that kingdom minded is that we work together. And whoever God uses on that platform for that day... Will God be glorified as long as people are healed and set free and delivered, okay? But we come with that not so much kingdom minded and with that expectation of what God is going to do that day. We come now how we can bless somebody else that day. But when we come to church, everybody can't be broke. Somebody got to be whole. Somebody got to be healed. I wouldn't want to go to a doctor. I wouldn't want to go to the hospital and the doctor's sicker than I am. But that that's the way the body of Christ we become. We've lost, we're not seeking the kingdom of God. We're not seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And we have so many people in the church now that's so bitter and broken. How are you going to heal me if you bitter and broken? How are you going to encourage me if you bitter and broken? That's the key. That's the key thing that's lost in that, that we don't seem to know that's lost in the body of Christ is that we stop seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Woo! That's the reason people talk about church hurt. But you'll never be healed from church hurt as long as you stay away. All right, let me move on. All right, all right. Listen. What I found... I'm talking about some principles. What I found, because this is going faster than I thought. What I found is that God is interested in all of his creation. God is interested in all of his creation. And he wanted to be restored. He said, I came to seek and save that are lost. His interest is not just to get me saved and going to heaven. Uh, listen. His interest is to get me into his kingdom. Heaven is, is part of it, okay? He, he, yes, he want me saved. Don't get me wrong. I'm not downplaying that. And, and yes, he want me to look heavenly. But he want me to be so kingdom-minded that when I become saved, I'm not just sitting on my stool or do nothing. Y'all yeah, got to get this. I'm not just sitting on my stool or do nothing, okay? Let's, let me just give you a couple principles. Jesus is our king. He's our Lord and Savior. He's the king of kings, the Lord of lords. Well, a king owns a territory or a country, and it's called a kingdom, right? We're talking about kingdom principles, right? A king owns a territory or country called a kingdom. He influences, he influences the kingdom through his will, his power, his culture, and his laws. Are y'all following me? Okay. So if he owns the kingdom, then he influences 
the kingdom through his will, not my will, but let his will be done, his power, his culture, and his laws. Okay. God called us to become a citizen of the nation of heaven, called the kingdom of God. The process is to accept the Lord Jesus as our Savior. He, we obtain grace from the Father and extend that grace. Uh, Jesus extend, is, excuse me. Jesus obtained grace from his Father and he extended that grace to me as a sinner through mercy. So I'm saved by faith through grace. I'm saved by grace through faith. And in church, the preacher and the teachers teach us to be born again and to ready to go to heaven. Again, I told you it should be, uh, Sunday morning should be a teaching moment, a growing moment. But we in the kingdom of God. We heavenly minded. We're kingdom minded. We're citizens. We're under God's command. We're under God's rule. Okay? It's not, we're not our own. We were bought with a price. So God planted the earth as a colony from heaven. The concept of a colony means that it is supposed to, it is supposedly an exact replica of the original. Woo wee! You, you get what I'm saying? Earth should be, we should be striving that earth would become an exact replica of heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. See, we miss these things when we say the model prayer, the Lord's prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what we as believers, the ecclesia, the called out, what we're doing, we should be trying to see, show as much of the kingdom of heaven in the earth realm as possible. How do we do that? By seeking and saving the lost. By being strong in the Lord. Okay? So it will begin to look more like heaven. God placed man on earth as ambassadors or managers of his ex extended territory. The purpose is to influence with the will, the power, the culture, and the laws of the original kingdom of nation. In other words, we shouldn't be altering what God wants us to do. We shouldn't be putting all these other stipulations on people to be saved. You know, we said, you need to get yourself right and come to the Lord. We couldn't get ourselves right. Why? That's the craziest advice that we're going to ever give when we try to tell people, you need to get yourself right and come to the Lord. No, I came to Jesus just as I was. Weary, wounded, and sad, but I found in him a resting place, and he have made me glad. I tell you, somebody got to be whole. Somebody got to be strong. Somebody got to be an encourager in the body of Christ so we can begin to have the uh, make the earth look more like the kingdom of God. That we can see the love of Christ, the grace of Christ, the mercy of Christ. I, I, I'm teaching hard. But the purpose of us that saved, that's the ecclesia, that the called out, is that we operate. We, we influence the world. The world shouldn't be influencing us. We should be influencing the world through the will of God. Not my will, but thy will be done. The power of God as he empowers through the culture of God. What do I mean by culture? By the love, the grace, and the mercy that God showed us. He said, if you love me, Keep my commandments. You know, when he asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? What did he tell Peter? Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. So I can hear God asking us that, that are saved, do we love him? And if we say, yes, Lord, we love you, then we ought to be feeding as many people as we possibly can the kingdom principles, kingdom-minded principles. But we have to get out of our own way. We have to get out of our feelings. Okay? See, when Adam sinned, it, it was a declaration of independence of the colony from the mother nation of kingdom. When Adam sinned. Thus, the process of restoration is not simple. Not simply to get people saved and back to heaven. It is to restore citizenship to people in the uh, to people in the rebellion to the king. 
So not not only we're we trying to get people saved, but we some people are saved and still want to be rebelled against the kingdom of God because they they think it should be one way. But we 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 should be about the ministry of reconciliation and restoration, getting more people, not only getting them saved, but getting them back to in the restoration of the citizenship of. Uh, 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 of the kingdom of God. Kingdom minded principles. Loving one another. Praying for those that despitefully use us. Forgive. the uh, Forgiving. Oh Lord. I could go on but forgiveness. Operating in forgiveness. Extending, extending grace and mercy. As you have received grace and mercy. Extending a helping hand. Seeking and save those which are lost. I, most people now in the church, I made it. Let, let Now, if anybody else make it, that's okay. No, that's not the way it is. If I made it, they can make it. But you, we all have had encouragement along the way. We did not make it by ourselves. We all, we didn't pull ourselves up by our own bootstrap. We all had some encouragement, whether it came from mama or daddy or grandmama or big mama uh, and uh, on them, on and them, and we all have had encouragement along the way. So we should be kingdom minded that we're encouraging others, not just to be saved, to be restored in the kingdom of God, to have that citizenship. How to, and that citizenship requires a relationship, and in that relationship, we begin to extend the principles, the culture of heaven. The culture of heaven. The culture of heaven is love. The culture of heaven is forgiveness. You, you know when the Bible says, when we get to heaven, there'll be no more. He'll wipe away every tear. No more sickness. No more dying. And I'm not, not saying we're going to get completely there. But we ought to get to the point where we begin to wipe somebody else's tears away. Now, we're not trying to be God. When I say we wipe somebody else's tears away, we're encouraging them. We're letting them know that we're going to walk with them. Huh. Come on and talk to me. I, I'm just saying, we have to act like we are citizens of heaven. We're in the earth, but not a part. We're in the world, but not a part of the world. Our citizenship is in heaven. I'm already seated in the heavenly realms. And my job while I'm still on earth, even though I already got a seat, you know, they used to sing a song, uh, I got a seat in the kingdom. See, now I begin to understand what they were talking about. Now I understand what they were talking about, uh, that I have a seat in the kingdom. Look, my time is winding up. We have to finish this next week. But we are to be kingdom minded. We're citizens of heaven. Even though we're in the earth realm, we are, we should be we should have be the extension of heaven here on earth. People ought to see some heaven in us, not just come off our lips. They ought to see the love of God. They ought to see the grace and the mercy of God. They ought to see the forgiveness of God through how we extend, how we extend a helping hand, how we extend encouragement, how we stand, how we extend, help uh, help people find themselves in the Lord, and. and Begin to practice those kingdom principles here on earth. We're trying to, earth should be, you know, when I, I, I got so much stuff going through my mind, I'm trying to slow my thoughts up, process down. But, but y'all get what I'm saying. We, we, we know that long as we're in the earth, we're gonna, we're gonna have battles. Again, I don't want to go to the hospital if the doctor's sicker than I am. So I don't want to go to a church where everybody is sick. There got to be somebody in the church that know enough about God. Is that person you? Are you the encourager? Is it the pastor that we work along with the pastor to extend the kingdom of God? Do people feel welcome when they come and they see you and they greet you in your place of worship? Do you extend a helping hand? Do you make people feel welcome? Do you encourage people? Are you extending the love of God? 
Okay? Okay, I'm going to stop right there. But part two, part two next week, we're talking about kingdom mentality. And we'll pick up about citizenship and kingdomship uh, in the Lord. Okay? Continue to pray for me as I grow and glow. As God continue to reveal stuff to me. Continue to pray for us as devoted to him. We really believe that God ordained this ministry, that we uh, began to disseminate some information to help people grow and become disciples of Christ and, and come to understand what God really uh, requires of us. I believe that, that God is, he is doing an amazing job of opening up doors for us, but it's not about us. Our main purpose is to glorify God. So I want to thank you for tuning in. Let's pray. God, I pray today that I will be an extension of your love, an extension of your grace, an extension of your mercy, an extension of your forgiveness. God, that when people come in contact with me, God, they will, without me opening my mouth, they will know that, they will feel and they will sense the presence of God, that they will, they will see you, God. And they're going to see that anointing and that favor that you placed on our lives, God, that we will be an extension of your kingdom. God, I pray for the body of Christ. I pray for the church. I pray for every pastor, preacher, and teacher that we don't just preach to get people happy, but we preach to get people changed. We, we preach that people be transformed. God, I lift up. I, I, I just lift up this world as a whole, God. I, every care and concern that we have, God, we place it in your hands. God, we thank you for who you are. God, continue to bless us throughout this day, and we'll forever praise you. For it's in the mighty and the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Have a blessed day in the Lord. Love you. Share this Bible study. Continue to pray for devoted to him. Bye now. See you next week.